and here I am covering your advanced Lego simulator because I'm an idiot who has no idea how YouTube works. Ah, oh, crap. I just said idiot and YouTube in the same sentence. Does that mean that this video is going to get flagged by YouTube's hyper-aggressive neural network as being unsuitable for some advertisers? Or what if I say f or f or mother f f because my last video, my Metroid one, got flagged as being unsuitable for all advertisers, which, you know, fun! Take that, Led Austin curse! Now it seems it's impossible to sanitize my content enough to satisfy our red logoed overlords. Whew, boy, I'm off track. How medication compliant am I this week? Not so good! Alright, well, by the power vested in me and my Zoloft prescription, we're gonna cover one of the most enigmatic topics in the Minecraft universe. If not all of gaming, the Endermen. Dark, creepy, tall, slender, teleporting monsters from another dimension. They're giant, and honestly, even now, after spending an entire week researching watching them, they utterly skeeve me out. But, you know, what I've discovered this week has clarified the Endermen for me a whole heck of a lot and transformed them from being mysterious bargain bin slender men to something, well, more interesting. Something, frankly, kind of tragic. And while I don't mean to step on Matt Pat's toes on his own channel, we're gonna be veering off the normal path you're used to while watching my video, but I promise, promise you, it will be worth it. New players to Minecraft, although I'm not sure how many of you there actually are left since, according to Microsoft records, over 100 million copies of the game have been sold by now. And it is now the number two most sold game of all time, beaten only by Tetris, which has been on the market for over 30 freaking years. Anyway, there's apparently 1.2 billion gamers in the world, so there's gotta be some of you who haven't played this game yet, or maybe just started, in which case you may not even know what the heck I'm talking about. Endermen, I hear you saying. <sighs> All I know from Minecraft is those weird dream pigs that keep blowing up my dirty hobbit hole. And that's fair, because Endermen have a really low spawn rate, lower than almost any other character in the game. To top it off, they don't show up if it's raining, because they can be killed with water, and they have a tendency to teleport away as soon as the sun rises. They're rare and fascinating. But there's so much more to them than their ability to teleport and scare the living crap out of you. They're considered a neutral character, like cows or pigs, unless you look them in the eyes. And if you do, you better be ready for a fight, because they'll try to murder the crap out of you. No. Oh, I just said murder. Oh, f I said f Oh, f I said Hashtag don't flag me, bro. Hashtag YouTube apocalypse. The most unique skill they have, in my opinion, though, is the ability to pick up blocks, which is really freaking irritating if one spawns on top of your house and just randomly starts pulling it apart. Aside from that, though, they're mostly harmless. Live and let live seems to be the motto. They're not here for you. They're here for your blocks. And it was because of this rarity in the overworld that I decided that I couldn't afford to just sit in a tree for days just waiting for an Enderman to appear like I were a hunter and they were in season. No, I needed a large sample size because I have measurements to do for science! So that meant only one thing. I had to go to their home. Man, they can drop something called Ender Pearls, which, you know, like, I just, <laughs> I don't want to know what they are, okay? They're either eyeballs, feces, or something else, and I just, I just don't want to know. I don't want to know what Ender Pearls are! You can craft these Ender Pearls into Eyes of Ender, which will help you locate underground strongholds, inside of which are portals which take you to the end. A dark, cold world filled entirely with Endermen. Well, Endermen and a giant freaking dragon. I hope you're not playing on hardcore mode because this thing deals a metric crap ton of damage and is a huge health pool. If you kill the dragon, you finally get to explore this vast second world and it is amazing. 
Firstly, I came here to study the teleportation of the Endermen. Thankfully, you don't have to sit around waiting for them to pop off. All you have to do is get a bite. So, first thing you do is cook a nice meal, and then you... What's wrong with the piss boy? Wait, sorry, I misread my notes there. You just have to dump water on their heads, apparently, and BAM! They zip off. Unfortunately, the unkempt chaos of the typical Minecraft landscape makes it really, really difficult to get specific measurements. Sure, each block is officially one square meter, but that doesn't do you much good when every single block is exactly the same and there's hills everywhere. And yeah! So, I found the most Minecrafty solution I could think of. I decimated the local ecosystem in order to build a huge construct designed to suit my needs. A huge grid the size of a football field with markings and measurements in every conceivable place an Enderman could spawn covered in water. So they could only land in my grid. We'll get to the bottom of this teleportation now. <laughs> and you know what? I discovered something unbelievably cool. Something I don't think any of the 100 million people who have purchased Minecraft have discovered. Endermen don't teleport. It looks like they do because they move so freaking fast, but they don't. They run. It's hard to see at normal speed, and it's not super obvious every single time, but I have 12 perfect frames here that explicitly show an Enderman turning and running the instant water hits him. This is a big deal for a couple of reasons. One. It lets me off the hook for doing complicated research on the space-time ramifications of teleportation, and, well... That's about it. It's not a surprise most people haven't noticed this because they run obscenely fast. 36.75 meters in just one-fifth of a second, pulling anywhere from 300 to over 1,000 g-forces of acceleration at speeds well over half the speed of sound. They are really putting those long legs to work. For contrast, Alex and Steve, the main characters of Minecraft run at about 5.38 meters per second. Way, way slower. Having this misconception cleared up that Endermen aren't actually teleporting in a game that actually has mechanics that allow for real teleportation, but that they're just running really, really fast, well, this left me with a ton of time to kill. And I decided to spend that time observing the Endermen in their natural environment, documenting their behavior like a frontier-era combination zoologist slash anthropologist. If I, if we, were so wrong about something as fundamental as how these creatures get around, what else were we wrong about? How many of our presumptions about these mysterious non-slender man slender men are completely wrong? A whole hell of a lot, it turns out. Everything you believe about the Endermen is completely 100% wrong. But thankfully, I'm here, and I've done all the legwork for you. You know, as a brief aside, some people have complained that Matt started to do more lore theories and pure, raw science ones, but you know what? I totally see how that happens. You enter a situation with a question in your mind, like, oh, how does Enderman teleportation work? And it turns out that it's not very interesting. But then, <laughs> then sometimes these bubkiss questions lead you to the real questions, the ones that are interesting and hard to answer, the things that keep you awake at night. And what is science if not the quest for fact to answer the unanswered questions? It's interesting to me that the home of Endermen is called the End. And it's when you finally defeat the Ender Dragon that you start to get glimpses into the world that you never received before. You see, the story of Minecraft, and yes, there is a story, isn't actually about you, the player. It's through your eyes, sure, but just like so many video game stories come before it, you're just a driver of the action. You're a tool, a means to an end, a means to an enderman? Ah, get it? I'll do, okay, I'll just, I'll just see myself out. The story of Minecraft isn't about you, it's about the enderman. Everything that happens, every landmark you achieve is specifically tailored to push you ever closer to what your real purpose is. Saving the Enderman. 
you have to get wood in order to make wooden tools, which you have to make in order to get stone tools, which you have to make in order to get metal tools, which you need in order to get diamond tools, which you need in order to mine obsidian, which you need in order to build portals to the nether, aka freaking hell, not a profanity, just an observation, which you need to travel to in order to kill blazes, which drop blaze rods, which you can refine into blaze powder, which you can finally combine with ender testicles in order to create eyes of ender, which you can use to locate strongholds and activate end portals, which take you to the end where you probably get your face melted off by a god dragon king a few times before, well, maybe eventually you can kill it and earn the achievement free the end. That achievement title is key. Absolutely key. You see, the Endermen aren't demons. They aren't monsters. They aren't mere enemies meant to make your life harder. They're victims, subjugatees, and oppressed people living under a tyrant dragon who are unable to muster the strength to throw off the shackles of oppression themselves. Not unlike me and my relationship with YouTube's new algorithm. In fact, during your fight against the dragon, you even see this monstrosity freaking attack the Endermen on the ground. You, only you, are powerful enough to stop it. I mean, who else could? Every monster in the game falls to your superior might. Your ability to craft weapons made of diamonds infused with magic more powerful than anything anyone has ever seen before. And those Endermen that you encounter in the real world, your home planet, they're not just there by coincidence. They're observers and martyrs. They're there to watch you, to sacrifice themselves so that you can become stronger, gain the strength and capacity to travel to their home plane and rescue them from their servitude. The Endermen, when you watch them from a distance, are a peaceful and social people. They relax, they build entire towns. They're not unlike the passive villagers in your own world, the ones who are so helpless that it's amazing that they haven't been wiped out by invading zombie hordes by now. Sure, they attack you when you look at them, but that could just be for any number of reasons. One, a willing sacrifice, goading you into killing them for their <clears throat> pearls. Two, I mean, what would you do if the most powerful creature on the planet stared you right in the face? Something you know has a reputation for cold-blooded and heartless murder of anything that stands in its way. When left alone, it's clear that they just want to be at peace. They don't need some sort of foreign invader filling their homes with toxic water. They just need rescued so that they can live alone, unoppressed. For the first time, and as long as they can remember, free. Sincerely, Austin. Thank you everyone for watching my video on the Endermen and its weird, twisty, game theory-esque turn that I took. I couldn't help it! When you uncover the truth, it is your duty to spread the truth, even if it doesn't fit your original format. Speaking of, if you like things like this, you should subscribe to the Game Theorist channel right now for more videos from me and from Mad Pat and Gaijin Gooba and I'm sure like all kinds of other stuff like Deadlock and all kinds of... And, but you probably like, you can tell I had lived this part because I'll say all kinds of stuff many times. All kinds of stuff! All kinds of stuff! All kinds of stuff!